Foot Clan, we got a great show for you today. We're going to talk about the big draft day trades and get into the AFC winners and losers. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Tuesday, May 3rd. Back in business. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. The Deucers are here as well. You've got the Judge, Al Borland, just, the Borgogin. Just deucing. And we have so much to talk about. I'm so excited to get in into it all. It's a big show. And Jason celebrated a big birthday yesterday. Aww. Happy birthday. Thank you. I am now the age where I can say anything I want. I am full DGAF. I don't care. Really? Yeah. Is that what it is? Yep. Once you get to become an old man. You oh, are get, we whippersnappers? You're darn right. Get off my lawn. Wow. <laughs> so are you going to be... Did you just make the transition to become the elderly people that give us a hard time on the pickleball courts? Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, watch out, rookies, because I just I might speak my mind. It was <laughs> it was very fun that you woke up this morning and you're like, guys, uh, <laughs> I might not be able to play because uh, my back hurts. Yes. My back, <laughs> <laughs> my back. I did not think I was going to be able to go. I had I had an old. And what did man you back. do? What did you do to your back? I just waited a while and it was like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're not that old, go. No, oh, I'm saying, how did you hurt it? Oh, how did I hurt sleeping? it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sleeping and <laughs> probably pickleballing. But. All right, we have AFC winners and losers. A uh, couple of big blockbuster trades that happened during the draft we My have to talk goodness. about. Last week was a lot of fun. We had the chance to go live on uh, right before the draft and then reflect on some of the, the players and the trades in the first round on Friday. And today's really a full recap of what transpired Glamour shot update for the listeners out there. Jason and I tied with three correct picks. Great job, Andy. Thank you. I'm so glad that you didn't win again because I know what the next year would be like if you were the only winner for two straight years. Yeah. But you are. I mean, you did win. Uh, you just won with me. Mike, mm. not so much winning for you, sir. No, no. Uh, I was a little worried I was going to get an offer, but <laughs> we got one in there with Brees Hall. Now... I mean, did you tank? Is this tanking because you want to see yourself up on the wall again? No comment. Okay. All right. So, Mike, the glamour shot. We'll have to figure out something. A different pose this what? year. You think I've got one pose? <laughs> Get out of here. Blue steel only. <laughs> ten years from now, we'll yeah. have ten beautiful <laughs> portraits to hang up around here. You know, statistically, uh, Mike losing every year is just not possible. Yeah, how is he doing this? <laughs> All right. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers if you want to follow us over there. Uh, we will be announcing the winners of the Ultimate Draft Week giveaway on the Thursday show. Is that right, Brooksy? Yes, sir. So we'll pick those people out and announce it, uh, giving away a Listener League spot, some free uh, autographed jerseys. Thank you for anybody that pre-ordered the Ultimate Draft Kit at ultimatedraftkit.com. You can still do that. It's still the cheapest price, and uh, it is less than a month away from its release. And big, big news the dynasty rankings, the startup rankings, the rookie rankings are up. They are live. So if you get the uh, Ultimate Draft Kit Plus, you get the dynasty pass, all that information. Now that we know the teams, there's so much work that we're pouring into the, the UDK behind the scenes. But all of that stuff is live right now. You could check it out. If you've got a dynasty league, you want to make some trades or you got a draft going on, get in. It's up. Yeah, and that's in the regular UDK, not just the dynasty pass. <clears throat> yes. All right, let's move on to the news. News and notes from around the league. Big, big trades in the first round. Couple of Browns changing towns. Oh, very nice. Let's uh, let's go with the first one that took place, which is. Uh... <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, we still haven't upgraded the graphic. No, Hollywood Brown. You now the graphic still has them in a Ravens uniform. Very disappointing. Uh, graphic team. Yeah, you know who you are. Fix it. Fix it. All right, Hollywood Brown, 
still sub 25 years old and no longer a member of the Baltimore Ravens. WTF was the uh, <laughs> the tweet from his quarterback. Sorry, the Cardinals Lamar. acquired Hollywood Brown and a third round pick in exchange for the 23rd overall pick in the draft. He's bringing over a one year, two point one million dollar contract, and then they picked up the option, the fifth year option, for thirteen point four million dollars. So two years cost controlled for the Cardinals goes opposite of DeAndre Hopkins now. Yeah, but by comparison to the AJ Brown deal, it can look it can look like, oh, you got the 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 less good players, so you didn't do a good job. But both of these teams, both these teams that traded for these players did outstanding work in the sense that there is no way that either one of those teams where they were drafting all all the top you know the top five wide receivers that there was a clear tear break uh, from they were gone so you for teams that needed wide receivers to come in and make an impact this year you had to draft the seventh or worst uh, well the Eagles could have taken Burks because that's who the Titans oh, took with the draft pick that they got for AJ Brown that is that is fair um, but it, I mean you're talking about Bringing in players who are known commodities, you, you yes. know, they're going to help the offense. In the case of the Arizona Cardinals, the Cardinals' offense was one of the best in the league to start last year. Remember, the Cardinals were 7-0, and on mm -hmm. fire, Super Bowl favorites when Hopkins was around. Hopkins goes down, the offense collapsed. They had no depth, no one else to threaten the, the defense. Um, and make those ancillary mediocre pieces like uh, an older A.J. Green uh, valuable. But now with Hollywood there, where you have to remember, Hollywood played college ball with Kyler. They're best friends. They talk every day. They were working out last week before this. Um, Hollywood requested this trade. So this is a really good connection. It fits the system. They know the system that Cliff Kingsbury runs. So I think it's going to come in and make an immediate impact. Uh, Kyler tied Tom Brady for the most 20 plus yard receptions last year, 35 of them, uh, and completed a league leading 49.3% of those 20 plus yard passes. It's a very big deal. Yeah. And, and so for Hollywood to go there, it really amplifies the view I think of, or the stability of Kyler Murray and this offense. You're going to have Hopkins, Brown, Green, Rondale Moore, Zach Ertz, and then they spin a second round pick on Trey McBride, the best tight end in the draft pass catching wise. So I think Kyler. It, it solidifies Kyler's place. Um, and then you talk about Hollywood. He was a top 12 wide receiver through the first half of last year with Lamar. Is he slotting into kind of low end uh, wide receiver two range for you? Yeah, he's he's a wide Spike weeks? Yeah, I think he's a, a, a volatile wide receiver two that can have monstrous weeks. A great best ball player. Um, it, it'll be TB, TBD to see how the targets um are divvied up you usually think of Hopkins as the clear target hog but that wasn't even really the case last year so no, he was a 20 percent uh, target guy which is th that's wild I I, yeah, I agree wide receiver two bat ish but like massive ceiling where it, it wouldn't shock me to see him finish in the top 15 all right and then the other side of the deal Lamar loses his uh by far the most prolific wide receiver he's had the discussion turns to Mark Andrews, Rashad Bateman. Hollywood had 145 targets. So, and and then beyond that, potentially, is there is there a name beyond Mark Andrews and Rashad Bateman that you are keeping your eyes on? <laughs> nope. I think that this is they, they they had so many draft picks. I believe they had right. 11 draft picks this year, um, and they want to establish it. They want to run the ball. Um, that that is why Hollywood. At least this is what he said. The reason he wanted out is he didn't want to be part of the run first system. He wanted to go to more of an air raid. Um, yeah. So I, I I think that you can. This is great for fantasy because now I think both Bateman and Mark Andrews are much safer known commodities. When there's only two main targets to go to, that's what you need for a small pie. You need to take two slices. Mm. Right, two real big slices. You just—it's a half a pie. Yeah. So, would you, if you were to place a bet today, Mister Moore, mm -hmm. on the target totals of Mark Andrews? Uh, where was he last year? What's the, what was the total? I think he was one fifty four. That's I don't I, I don't have. I, I want to set a line versus just saying it goes up or something yeah, like that. I, if the line was one hundred fifty four targets, so what? One hundred fifty targets. Yeah, I will take the I will take the over. 
but barely. I think he'll repeat what he did last year. Okay, so his his target pace from week nine on, so after the bye week, was yeah. 175 targets. Uh, before the bike, it was 123. So and, he went. It is worth noting that he had a lot of targets when Lamar Jackson went down. Um, I would be interested to see what his target pace was in the games, in the full season of just Lamar Jackson. I'm sure it was still great, but it probably wouldn't have been 154. All right. Uh, so the other big move, A.J. Brown. Whew. A.J. Brown was traded to the Eagles in exchange for the 18th overall pick and a third-round selection. And $100 million. Yeah, they signed him to a four-year. I mean, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's a good yeah. deal. $100 million uh, deal, $57 million guaranteed. And they had the luxury of doing this. They made the move. They had the money. Jalen Hurts is still on a rookie deal. So, again, you're talking about a small pie over the back half of the year, but a player that has excelled in a – lower opportunity offense in AJ Brown it seems like I'm I lean towards AJ Brown not being ranked any higher than he was in Tennessee but it's sure. great things for Jalen Hurts and he really moved up my dynasty rankings that just got released in the UDK Hurts Hurts did because of what I view as a you know another checkbox towards commitment step 1 you know you you go in and you kind of say that you're our guy. Step two, you go in and you get one of your favorite players, your one of your friends, and you bring them in and you give them every opportunity to succeed. AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard, when he needs to pass, he's got the weapons. Yeah, I, I would agree with everything you just said. Uh, AJ Brown might go down a few spots for me. I, I think his ceiling is not as high as it was with Tennessee personally, uh, but you're right. He's super efficient. So a low volume system uh, system shouldn't scare you away, but Hertz, this is another situation where Hertz and AJ Brown were real life, very close friends. It was Hertz that was pining breakfast levels. Uh, I'm sure now that they're going to be in the brunch, same city, they... but they were going to ch children's birthday parties. And you know, I mean the, like random when, kids. No, the other, it, like Hertz just went to AJ when here's when their you know, kids, yes. well, they attended each other's kids, birthday parties. Exactly. And that's when you know, you're a real friend because hey, Billy, you know who I am. <laughs> None of us Who wanna, is this man? <laughs> none of us it's want me, to Jaylen go Hurts. to other people's kids' birthday Correct. Party. That's true. So when you do it, I know that I'm at a friend's house. Right. Like a real world friend. So there that's just fact that's math. That well, that's not breakfast, but it's close. They're close. So um yeah, he was pining for the Eagles to get AJ Brown. They they did. And the fact that they now have these best friends and you give them a hundred million dollars, fifty seven million guaranteed, Hertz is not going anywhere. If he has a mediocre season, he is the quarterback going forward. And just, so this last year for the Eagles, I mean, you had Devontae Smith soaking up 22% of the targets for the wide receivers, but then it was Quez Watkins at 13%. Like, and Quez is fine. He's, yeah, he's, he's a good he's, player. He's, he's an okay guy. Then Jalen Rager. Better as a three. Jalen Rager, 12% of the targets. Um, the, he's a pretty good wide receiver eight for a team. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Eagles, you know, were – Percentage wise of their pass is one of the lowest to the wide receiver position. And that I think that will go up. And I think that the pie actually increases in size. You don't make that look at the commitment that they have done just over the last couple of years. Jalen Rager was a whiff, but he was a first round draft pick. Devontae Smith, first round draft pick. Trade a first rounder. I mean, that's three years in a row that you're trying to address the wide receiver position, and I think they have finally addressed it. And they were super run heavy last year, but that's not how it started. They started throwing the ball a lot. They weren't very successful. They were more successful running, and they pivoted. That's good coaching. I agree. I think that the pie won't be as Baltimore Ravens small. Yes. It was the worst fantasy season of A.J. Brown's career last year. Uh, he missed four games the year before he missed two games. So you have had some injury concerns. It was under 1,000 and had five touchdowns last year, but gets to start over in Philadelphia. Um, so And Tennessee turned around and used the pick for, for Traylon Burks yep. right away. So kind of drafted what they viewed as a replacement and reset the clock on a contract. And, um, you know, they were also the team that drafted Malik Willis. So earlier this offseason – you know, I talked about the, the, the yep. it's a it's really close there in Tennessee. Like if you if it goes wrong, you could have turnover at quarterback. You know, the Derrick Henry clock is running out. You've got a new wide receiver here. 
So it'll be very interesting to watch. A couple other pieces of news. I don't know if we mentioned Josh Jacobs' fifth-year option was not picked up. In fact, the Raiders picked up none of their fifth-year options. Correct. And they did draft a running back uh, as well. And then the Falcons said sayonara to Mike Davis. 196 chances with the ball last year. Cordero got paid this offseason. It's looking very clean for Cordero to have a big role in the offense. Yes, much cleaner. And they did. Uh, they have Damian Williams on the roster, and they drafted Tyler Algier uh, in the fifth round. Yeah, a fifth-round draft pick at the running back position. We know that that's, generally speaking, low odds of hitting. But I, I really liked Algier out of BYU. He's, he's big. He's athletic. And for a fifth-round pick, he's got a decent path to be a starter sooner than later. Yeah, I, I can't remember the last time that I've want like I I kind of want to draft Algier. I, I think that I there's can. A, there was a Aaron Jones. Forward. Sure, yeah, Aaron Jones was a later round guy, but it, it's rare because the historical hit rate of fifth yes. round running backs not good. Right, but the situation he lands in is perfection. He's BYU, right? Yes, and he, he more of a James Conner kind of comp, right? Yes. Uh, not a lot of top speed, but um, uh, but he's, big, big, he's strong, bigger, right? Can catch yeah. the ball, yep. yep, fast enough. So uh, yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Uh, the Falcons with Marcus Mariota behind center now, and then drafted Drake London. Well, Mariota for now. Yeah, you yeah. want you think Ritter is on the way? Well, I mean, it's also sooner than later. <laughs> You think he's going to get rid of Mariota? Oh, oh yeah. 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 Let's get you. That joke is permitted over, <laughs> over right. 40. That's right. Uh, all right. We are. <laughs> Grandpa jokes? Ooh. I don't know about that. I don't have a grandchild you yet. Don't have to be a, you don't have to have a grandchild to be a grandpa. It's just true dad age. <laughs> this is, uh, not sure the math checks out Did there. you say you don't have to have no, a child well, to be a grandpa? Well, I mean, like, kids call. That's why, I mean, you got to have something. There's got to be a. Can't Look, just break into grandpa territory. I understand the technicality, but like you don't have like other kids who aren't related to you have never called you like Uncle Andy, even though you are not their uncle. No, they haven't. But I mean, I, I uncle gets thrown around a little bit more. Yeah. Okay, so we <laughs> uncle's a little. You could be loose around the edges. <laughs> I've never with seen uncle. someone call someone a grandpa outside of insulting them. Right, that wasn't because they were a grandfather. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. Breaking news. All right, and this just came across the wire for us. Adam Schefter. Cool. This is great. Um, all that talk about Hollywood. Hit the music. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know music. what? Let's do it. All right. Arizona Cardinals Pro Bowl wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins is being suspended six games for violating the NFL's performance-enhancing drug policy. Yay! Well, hey. We, you know, you remember when I talked about how um, the offense collapsed without Hopkins and we didn't have anyone else to threaten defenses? That's going to be put to the test. Cool. Going to be running, uh, what, four tight end packages out there? Yeah, that's why we drafted them all. This is, this is great. Um, slap in the face of Hopkins' redraft value right off the bat. Going to miss six games. And Hollywood Brown, who Mike, I know you said you like him. He, yeah, I, I, I do think wide it's receiver a, one. <laughs> it's a big deal. I AJ Green relevant again. Oh no! Don't no. Yep. No, no. 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 Rondale Moore is still here. <laughs> yeah. Night. Last year they didn't matter. Uh. I'll, what I mean, a disaster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, you're going to start the season with Hollywood Brown being the wide receiver one in targets and in fantasy points for the Arizona Cardinals. So. Um, you know, it, it, we'll have more information as we get closer to draft season and see how everything unfolds. Yeah, this just broke. Yeah, this is this is just breaking. But obviously, come draft season, the the beginning, I always care much more about the first month of the season than anything else when I'm drafting redraft players. And Hollywood could get off to a very strong start, even if the Cardinals don't get off to the strongest start. This will obviously it's going to hurt Kyler too. It'll I mean, hurt it's Kyler. Yep. It'll hurt Connor. Um, and and the whole offense. <laughs> And our feelings. Yeah, I mean, just, that's what's most important here. We had we had five seconds where we had a couple of wide receivers together. Dude, do you guys remember when we were so happy? <laughs> <laughs> it was like five minutes ago. Yeah. Well, all right, let's talk rookies. Hey, rookie, welcome to the NFL. All right, we'll start in the AFC South with what Jacksonville did at the draft, which was not much for Trevor Lawrence. 
I think that's really the headline there. There were no significant offensive additions other than maybe trying to reinforce their offensive line yeah, you in the third round. The third. But they they had done enough with Christian Kirk, I guess, this offseason. Oh, yeah. You, it would have been – if the Jaguars had spent like a third on a wide receiver – after dumping all the money on Kirk and Zay and Jones, Zay Jones yeah. it would just be like, what are you doing? Yeah, I mean, they drafted a dog in the fifth. Um, oh. Uh, Snoop Connor? Snoop reference? It, yes, it is. Mm. Snoop mm. Connor. Um, Trade it up for Snoop. Yes, uh, which is which is interesting, obviously, with the health of the running back core. Um, I, you still – the timeline right now would be that ETN starts the season fine if things continue to trend uh, on the timeline. And – James Robinson would be a little questionable. So I think that they they just needed a little bit of depth here. Yeah, so I, I don't even – I don't view Trevor Lawrence as a loser from the draft. I think it was very neutral, and that situation didn't change a lot for fantasy. Uh, what you knew going in is pretty much what it is coming out. Uh, the Texans surprised people, I think, drafting John Mechie the third in the second round out of Alabama. Why I didn't mind that? the pick Yeah, personally – uh, but that was where they chose to go to give Davis Mills another weapon. They obviously brought back Brandon Cooks. So it's really a it's a st strategic choice of do you want a player who's more guaranteed of success or are you looking for a player who has the potential to become a star? And I think what they have done in Houston by taking Mechie, Mechie profiles to be a, a good solid route running um, slot receiver. Uh, slot receiver. You know, you're, you're he, he's not going to set the fantasy football world on fire, but he is entering into a wide open role. You got Brandon Cooks, and then it's like Nico yeah. Collins, and so he's going to have plenty of opportunity. But he doesn't profile as that that player that will score a bunch of touchdowns and 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 dominate for fantasy at all. And then they picked up Damian Pierce, running back out of Florida, in the fourth round. Uh, again, four, there's the opportunity there. Yeah, the opportunities. There's a lot of interesting players in the fourth round this year. Maybe uh, it could be more than usual, but that it may it may just always feel like that. And the NFL is pushing running backs down in the draft right more and more these guys might have been a round or two earlier, right? Just he, philosophically, yeah, years, like ten years ago, maybe they go in the third. Uh, but Damian Pierce with not a ton of established guys in front of him. So as the and I like that the Texans didn't spend huge capital on it. But just over time, as this team is trying to rebuild, Damian Pierce. I mean, he, he's got he definitely has some juice. And you know, late in the second round of your rookie picks, choosing between him and some of these other guys, uh, uh, Damian Pierce is on my radar. All right. Um... Would you consider the Burkhead Marlon Mack situation though, because of the draft capital there? Like, I mean, they came out more unscathed than they could have. For sure, it, it's funny. I I mentioned on a show uh, uh, last week or so, um, you know, that sexy Rexy Burkhead is the starter. The amount of Marlon Mack tweets that I got was like, "You forgot about Marlon Mack." Like, uh, did I? <laughs> I'm not. I'm right. not sure. I forgot. Or I just failed to mention him because he's Marlon Mack. Yeah, post Achilles. Yeah, I mean, Marlon Mack post Achilles and Cam Akers post Achilles. Both of them were like, they left a lot to be desired for the eyeballs last year, and we'll see what they have. Mack was still very young. Obviously, Akers is very young. But um, but like Deonta Foreman, who uh, he also had an Achilles injury years ago, he just now looks right. like he's finally getting back into somewhat of a, a decent football player. Uh, all right, let's talk about the Colts. Uh, winners and losers, what were your takeaways from this one, Mike? I mean, Alec Pierce, they took a wide receiver in the in the second round. This is their first pick. Yeah, it, it was their first pick. And, and at that time, so they were uh, you know, just behind um, George Pickens, who went to the Steelers. So I don't mind it. You Maybe you could have uh, – I thought maybe they would go with Sky Moore. But who dropped? I mean, he dropped past a lot of names that we were not expecting him to go behind. Sure, and I I totally get it for the NFL. I mean, out of Western Sky Moore, out of a smaller school, I mean, you want you want your players tested. Like you get George Pickens, bigger guy out of Georgia, or Sky Moore out of a small school. I 
don't blame an NFL team for making those decisions, but they needed help. And they're going to see if Alec Pierce out of Cincinnati can be that guy. Yeah, we didn't talk Alec Pierce much before the NFL draft. He's 6'3", 213. He's a deep ball, contested catch guy, runs a 4'4", 4 4 um, So this is this could be bad news for T.Y. Hilton. Um, you know, well, he's he's not technically back unless did Tilton. Hilton no, that's that's what I'm saying. Oh, right. I'm saying that they they might not bring back Ty Hilton. Um, and Alec Pierce just kind of goes into the deep ball, uh, role. But it's I don't view this as a negative for Pity City. Agreed. I, I I don't think this is someone. Even though it was a good draft capital invested, um, you have to have more than just one wide receiver. Otherwise. You're going to just lock Michael Pittman down. So this is probably just good for the offense um, for Indianapolis. And Pity City still has a freeway in front of them. But Mike, <laughs> they did make two investments to the, into the tight end position. Sure. But they also made a very decent financial investment into Gigantor. Uh, I mean, well, well, it takes tight ends a while to really get things going and, you know, Woods, they took him in the third round out of Virginia. Gigantor being Mo Alley Cox. Yeah. <laughs> the, t the tight end for the Colts. Yeah, that's probably a fair thing to say. Oh, uh, man. Which we will no longer say Mo Alley Cox. It's I mean, can you even call him Gigantor if he's not the tallest tight end on the team? He's still the, he's still the biggest. He is. Have they been, they've been lying about that number? Yeah, I yes. think they say he's like 6'3 or something because it's embarrassing to write the 7 as your first uh, digit. So I believe he's 7'3. <laughs> that's so embarrassing. Well, it's just um, imagine you're like, okay, who are you? Who am I up against this week, Coach? Ah, they got Mo Alley Cox, the tight end. He's six three, and you're like, okay, I prepare for this guy. And then you show up, and there's a man who's standing eight foot five. Right. What are you going to do? He was a foot. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't. I mean, it's not that. I think that the tight end situation is more wide open than from a pass catcher perspective in Indianapolis than people think. And if you like Matt Ryan, they have Kylan Grants in there. They invested on two other tight ends. I think it's a little bit more wide open from a production standpoint than maybe other people do because Mo Ali Cox can do more than catch the football. Um, and I, they had I, lost. They lost Jack Doyle. Exactly. They needed to. They needed tight ends. Yeah. Yeah. This. How is, big are the hands on these guys? Uh, I I believe this is where I I mocked uh, Trey McBride going because I, I they did need a tight end, so it's no surprise they took. Uh, Woods in the third round. All right, one more team left to get to here in the AFC South, but let's go ahead and uh, take a quick break. Well, the Titans, coming off a number one seed, 12-5 and five finish, left their fans in, in utter sadness. And uh, Did you see the video? Uh, Which video? Wow. Out of the out of the Tennessee war room. Oh no! And coach, were they high fiving? No. Oh, they he were not. He looked like a and oh Vrabel. Yes, yeah, yeah, so coach Vrabel, Vrabel had no control over this situation, and it's and it, the the things that I heard that the way the Tennessee was talking about it is they essentially felt backed into a corner. Like this is just this is something we're going to have to do. We're not going to be able to keep AJ Brown because we're so off on money, what they were offering and what he was willing to take. So they had to rip the Band-Aid off and try and recuperate some value. So you know, I guess good on them for addressing it now instead of losing AJ Brown later or having a very disgruntled wide receiver. But uh, at least they they were saying that this video of Rabel getting up and walking away was like right after the trade happened, and he looked like a very displeased man. Yeah, I mean, it's a downgrade no matter what. E yes. Even if Traylon Burks turns into A.J. Brown. He's which is not, unlikely. Which, which is unlikely. He's not him now. Um, he's, you know, it, it takes acclimation to, uh, to get into the NFL. And I do love Traylon Burks. He was someone that I liked pre-draft. I yeah. liked oh, his yeah, yeah. film. Uh, you know, the, the, the real negative, the only negative that happened to him through the whole process, because his film is good, his production is great, um, everything he checks like every box is age. The only problem was his combine. His combine wasn't good, and we worried that he might tumble in the draft. Well, he he did the opposite of tumbling in a draft. He was worthy for the Titans to trade away AJ Brown to select him at the 18th pick, which was a much higher selection than 
AJ Brown was drafted three years ago in the second round. That's Tra a good opportunity. AJ Brown for him was this a year. two second round pick, right? Yeah. Oh, so, I thought you said third. Apologies. I think I said second round three years ago. Maybe that's what my brain said. I don't <laughs> two, know three, what three, my two, mouth two, said. Three, three. Uh, Kyle, do me a favor. Let me know what the financial implications of disposing of Ryan Tannehill will be in the next couple of years, because that's part of the equation here too. Like coming into it, when you're looking at rookie drafts, um, it, it's interesting because Traylon Burks on the surface, if this team stays competitive, if Ryan Tannehill stays the quarterback, there's there's great opportunity. If 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 Derrick Henry keeps providing them with this play action pass offense, it, Traylon Burks should have a great opportunity to be a year one impact player but long term if they do make a move and they do transition to Malik Willis or something of that nature it could become more murky in Tennessee um, as as you know Derrick Henry is not going to be there forever they cannot get rid of him this year it would be a 57 million dollar dead cap and even next year it's almost, 18 million it's almost 19 so i that's a that's a tough situation. I, maybe you can trade him away, but at the same time, I mean, Malik Willis fell in the draft for a reason. The NFL did not think he was pro ready. You give Malik Willis possibly two years, right, to learn. I think that's a very good situation for for Willis, and then Ryan Tannehill's contract is is uh, easier to move on from. What do you do with Malik Willis now when you talk about? Oh, man. Like, you know, dynasty startup drafts or rookie draft positioning because it's not what you thought it was going to be. Or like right. better yet, like two quarterback leagues right. where you're looking at the value of, of securing another quarterback in this draft and you thought Willis was going to be almost a Trey Lancian type of pick. Well, he might be. He might sit for two years. Okay, okay. And and so then it seems like such a more risky selection at this point. Uh, it certainly is. I mean, uh, e even though they traded up for him, which is a good sign that they, you know, they're like, hey, the value's there. We got to go get him. He, he, but he did drop. So the capital that was invested even in the trade up isn't that much for a quarterback going into the third round. If Tannehill comes out this year and has a really good year, which now is maybe a little less likely with, uh, without AJ Brown. Right. Uh, but if he comes out and has a good year, then Malik Willis's career maybe never even gets off the ground. Um, yeah, it's very possible. But this is a well-run franchise, a super well-coached team. That's part of why I like Traylon Burks. They always Burks. find a way. They, that's what I love is is that he finds a way to utilize the pieces he has. And I think that if Malik Willis ends up the starter, it's going to be because he should be. If he shouldn't be, you know, he, he won't because Vrabel cares about winning. And, and that's part of why I'm so high uh, personally on Traylon Burks. He's he's my fourth uh overall rookie this year um, because I, I think the opportunity he comes in with and knowing that there's a coach who was going to get the most out of him and he's a physical freak that has the big body that is more predominant for fantasy stardom. Do you have him over Garrett Wilson right now? I do. I have him one spot over Garrett Wilson. Uh, Robert Woods comes away a winner because he's the most trusted but at the same time, Woods is coming off an injury. Yeah, It'll be interesting to see what to happens. And he's older, right? I mean, Robert Woods has got to be, what, 30, 31? 30, 31? He was around there. They and did take a running back yes. in the fourth round. Another uh, big boy. I believe this was Hassan the... Hassan Haskins out of Michigan. He was the linebacker, right, who s turned into a running back? That I do not remember. But his production profile is... It's okay. Um, in his... The, the final year there, you know... 1,300 yards on the ground, 20 rushing touchdowns, not a ton of receiving work. But then again, if they are grooming this guy, who's he's big, like he's he's a thick boy. Uh, if he is going to be the new replacement for Derrick Henry over the next couple of years, then the pass catching doesn't matter as much. The Browns, let's move to the AFC North. The Browns ended up da drafting David Bell, wide receiver in the third round. Uh a lot of people like David Bell. And then Jerome Ford, not a great situation. Some people really like Jerome Ford running back out of Cincinnati. But fifth-round pick, not going to make an impact this year. Correct. But I believe Kareem Hunt and um, who's the other? Chubb? No. Oh, uh, Dearness Johnson. Dearness Johnson are both potentially gone after this season. So Ford could have a depth role after that. 
but doesn't it, seem great. No, a, a fifth round running back who's fourth on the depth chart is never going to come into relevance. By the time he'll get his shot, they will replace running backs on the roster. So uh, unfortunate, but he's he's a good depth piece. David Bell, on the other hand, I saw some people saying like that he was a big loser in the draft because he, he did fall to the third round, and and some people had him as you know a high second round prospect he wasn't the set the combine world on fire Ooh, i like it <laughs> yep gosh. bell fell to the third but this is a really good opportunity i mean what is the competition you have amari cooper and donovan people jones and anthony schwartz a bunch of unproven guys if david no, bell there's, a, there's an opportunity there with watson now. exactly a good quarterback yeah. yeah there it is so i i actually think david bell had he he, he got a good spot if you're going to fall into the third and be disappointed might as well go to a place where opportunity and quarterback plays uh, there al was uh al was very startled by the bell i'm sure our listeners were as well well i mean it did i oh al for all of them mckissick Just give me a kiss. <laughs> all right let's talk about the ravens we talked about the big trade hollywood brown is gone so coming out of the draft for shot bateman has a huge opportunity first round draft capital mark andrews but also, let's talk about J.K. Dobbins because this was a team that was rumored to be in contention for Melvin Gordon. And is this a, a pat on the butt to say, J.K. Dobbins, we trust you. You're our guy. We, I mean, they had a lot of picks. They had Jeez. two fourths. They had two firsts. They had 11. They had 11 picks. And they took they four fourths. They took Five, Tyler six Batty. Six fourths? Yeah. yeah. Six? And they, and they used them all. Everyone was thinking they were going to package, trade them. Um, but that, that, was, that was pretty crazy. Uh, Tyler Beatty was a running back who was interesting. Um, production profile-wise, produ yeah. Production profile is good. He could catch the ball. It, it doesn't matter. He was their 11th drafted player. This is a Justice Hill type. Uh, honestly, that means Gus Edwards has a, a bump, too. Absolutely. But J.K. Dobbins, when I was putting together my rankings, he is very high. And my initial thought when I'm going through my process post-NFL draft, my number one takeaway was, I got to go trade for J.K. Dobbins. I got to do it now Interesting. because I think he's going to be great. This is a team that is dedicated to they, – they got Tyler Linderbaum, Linderbaum uh, who is the Cardinals a pick. phenomenal uh, center. And th so they, they improved their offensive line. They didn't get competition for J.K. Dobbins. He's a good player. They lost Marquise Brown. The way this team is going to win is running the ball. I think J.K. Dobbins uh, huge is like this is like the drums on the butt. This isn't just like a pat on the butt. This oh. is you're, you're coming up behind and you're so excited you get like four or five the drums. Get them, yeah, the little underhand drums. I don't know. I'd feel about Brr, that. No, you'd feel great, like, man. Because under it's, the don't cheek. give me the on the cheek on the cheek. Okay. So if yeah. I make a good shot in pickleball, I am risking getting the drums. Oh no, it has to be a you, really good. Thank you, Mike. It's got to really be a great good. shot. You well, make a good seems, shot. I'm just, that seems I might likely a, though. <laughs> okay, that's fair. Then get your booty ready. Can we get that quote? Uh, the Steelers <laughs> at nine and seven. Uh, take your picket Dude. of your favorite pickings here. Uh, picket in the first, fell to 20. Pickens in the second, wide receiver out of Georgia with uh, fanfare. And then another wide receiver later on in the draft. Nice. And if there's one thing the Steelers are known for, it's hitting more than missing on the wide receiver position calvin austin the third out of memphis he's in the fourth round and calvin austin is uh is itty bitty 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 he's speedy uh, right but yeah he was one of the combine superstars a four three two mm. just i mean he is extremely fast extremely quick and with pickens in the second you, you kind of alluded to it andy where the steelers are they are very good at reloading their wide receiver core every so often in the second and in the third. Uh, like, you just – Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool, they both have – I think uh, – what's the – Claypool has two more years on his rookie. I think Deontay maybe has one. Claypool's a loser in this situation and to me. Deontay he, might be as well. I They could be. Uh, but I think it'll take George Pickens some time to overtake them. Where I think they're a loser is that they likely won't – they won't re-sign both Deontay and Chase Claypool. No way. Like, no. Claypool it could be the odd man out, and then you know in That's two what years it's going to happen. He'll be looking for a new team. But dude, Kenny Pickett. I mean, what what better situation can this kid be walking into? Very little competition. 
Even though he fell to 20, little competition to get on the field. He has to beat out Mitchell Trubisky. And, and the first then, quarterback off the board, right, at 20? Yes. Correct. Yes. So, and then his – Steelers just stumble into potentially the best Najee, situation. Deontay, Chase Claypool, George Pickens. And a defense. The Muth. Yeah. Oh, I mean, this is – Muth is – I mean, Kenny Pickett is surrounded – by talent. It, the, his situation is so crazy. And it's because Deontay Johnson and Chase Claypool were both hits. That's yeah. the reason why they drafted two more wide receivers, because they will not financially be able to pay what those two wide receivers want. So I don't know who's going, but they one of one of the two of them will not be on this roster when their contract comes up. They will trade them. But I, that, I think that's part of it is an indictment on Claypool and how he's been so up and down. I mean, it, maybe, but they always do this. They're all they are always drafting wide receivers. Always be drafting so, wide yeah. receivers. George, George Pickens. Um, it's a it's an extra feather in the cap that the Steelers endorsed him yep, because of their track is. record. He was one of my favorite. Um, Pre NFL draft prospects, I thought he was going to go in the first round. Fell quite a bit, even into the second round. But uh, I love him, and he is the big-bodied, prototypical type of receiver that can become a true number one. And he's coming in rookie and rookie with their future quarterback. And just to confirm, this Deontay, this is his last year on his rookie deal. The Bengals, not a lot to talk about here, fantasy wise, but something that was pointed out by the Borgogan at lunch today. <laughs> Hayden Hurst is just sitting there as the the tight end for Joe Burrow. Okay, and CJ Uzama's gone. I mean, yep. we haven't talked about it very much, but that is, I mean, I I don't know if he gets drafted, but it's going to be a very interesting name to be able to spot start. As of right now, there's just not another. I mean, this could have been a home to Trey McBride. It could have. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, that's this DFS stuff. Like Hayden Hurst, it's hard to see a world where he is anything more than three or four solid weeks. Yeah, that's that is probably true. But being a starting tight end for somebody sure. that people love. I think the Bengals had a good draft for them as an NFL team. Fantasy-wise, it's all the vets and what you thought beforehand changes not at all. Not the case with the Jets, who also had a great oh. draft, but also have big fantasy implications. Number 10 overall, Garrett Wilson. Number two rookie wide receiver off the board. But Garrett Wilson goes into a situation that I actually like, and I know that um, opinions are vast. Like, I took a poll on Twitter this week, and 15,000 players participated. 49.9% said that Brees Hall was their 101 in rookie drafts. The other 51.1, it was spread across Garrett Wilson, Jamison Williams, Drake London, Chris Olave. What was the second highest? Well, they you can't put enough options in there to be able – they were even. Sure. Very even. But I'm saying it was like 17% for the second Yeah, but eight, 18, 18%. And so there is a, a lot of opinion on which wide receivers, what situations people are going to like, and Wilson gets thrown into that mix. And to me, that draft pick has to be based on two things, the talent that you believe Garrett Wilson has and the talent that you believe Zach Wilson has. Yeah. So – uh, those two components, you know, the team I think had such a solid draft and they have, I think, a great head coach and they're moving in the right direction. And you look at what the Jets have done in contrast to what the Bears have done <laughs> to support their young quarterback. You know, Elijah Moore last year, Corey Davis, still young and can catch the football, Garrett Wilson. And then they go, they trade up and they take Brees Hall and put – their quarterback into a better position uh, again. You know, you got to fix the offensive line. The, yeah. Still, but um, I, very interesting. Yeah, I, I think that the Jets have really given Zach Wilson. It, it says a couple things to me. One, it says that they're they're building for their young quarterback the right way, but it also says that they believe in Zach Wilson. They what they're seeing, what they you know, uh, obviously they drafted him. They want him to succeed. Um, but at the same time, I think they're saying if we get the pieces, we can really take that step forward, and they've got enough pieces here. Garrett Wilson is awesome. I think Brees Hall is amazing. I mean, I'm, I, I've been a, a truther from day one, and, uh, you know, I've, I, I've seen a lot of mixed reaction here, and it's so funny to me because it's all Michael Carter. It's right. all like, oh, no, he, go, he went where Michael Carter went. I'm like, okay, I'm I will concede that there is a realistic outcome where Brees Hall is not the third down back. Carter is in in that situation for a while, but it's like I am also in no possible way, shape, or form 
worried about a fourth round 5'8 running back who was okay last year when he was the only guy in town. And when it was not Zach Wilson. Right. It was like they just spent a lot of draft capital. And, and I know it's a second round pick, but we have to adjust our viewpoint of like, well, it's not a top 10 NFL pick like Christian McCaffrey was. I don't know that that's ever going to happen again. The best running backs, the best, you know, is, uh, you can have great production, great athleticism, great age, which he checks all three of those boxes. So did Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor was a second round pick, went behind uh, a wide receiver drafted for his team that year as well uh, in Michael Pittman. So I, I think this is a great landing spot for Brees Hall. I do think that it's probably too young of an offense to take off in 2022. I don't think they're going to be a great offense this year. But you'll see enough flashes and going forward as they as they grow and then maybe next offseason they really, really fix the offensive line. Um, I think it could be a high powered offense. So for Dynasty, I I really love the prospects here. And I I think Michael Carter's a big loser oh, in this draft. I mean yeah, your, yeah. your your dynasty window of of, of hope with mm -hmm. Michael Carter just was deleted. The the trade up very small, but also very interesting for Brees Hall, where the Jets moved up from 38 to 36, and it cost them a fifth, which NFL teams value a fifth-round pick. So they must – I don't know if they got spooked or if they caught wind that maybe the Houston Texans were – Yeah, I mean, that makes sense. We're going to be considering Brees Hall, but the fact that they're like, okay, we're, we're not messing around. We're going to go and get him that long-term the commitment is to Brees Hall. And, like, looking at Michael Carter in games where – in games with Zach Wilson, it was essentially three targets. Three targets for, for Michael Carter, which, at the same time, that can be bad news for Brees Hall's receiving upside if Zach Wilson doesn't change that. Corey Davis, uh, it's ending here soon, mm -hmm. uh, your window for Corey Davis, with uh, the addition of Wilson and then Elijah Moore's emergence. Imagine he'll get this year, right? What Davis? Davis? Oh, yeah, Davis yeah. will be yeah, he'll get part this of the year. team. I just mean it's ending soon. Like yeah, the, sure, sure. The long-term view changes when you have... He's no longer the future two on this roster. Correct. The Dolphins. What were your takeaways, winners and losers on this? Uh, you know, they didn't have a lot of picks. Fourth-round pick, they took a wide receiver. Um, quarterback yeah. in the seventh round. I, I mean, mean they, did their, they did all their damage with trades. Yeah, they drafted Tyreek Hill. Uh, that's what they did this year. <laughs> Um, nothing changes from, uh, you know, the, their draft picks. I don't think it is going to even factor into the Waddle Tyree kill to a situation. It, it, it's, it's what it was going into the draft. Um, what did they have? Four total picks? Yeah. Four total picks. Yeah. Uh, the Patriots made a strange first round selection, uh, Ooh, I see out of you, Chattanooga, I Cole strange, did, the though. guard that some thought would go in the third round. Uh, because they're always always be out thinking your opponent, and then they did the same thing kind of in the second round with uh, Tyquan Thornton out of Baylor, a burner. Yeah, but uh, they traded up to acquire. They did not need to. They didn't. I mean, maybe so, they I, essentially gave up the pick that became Sky Moore and a fifth round pick, and they didn't take Pickens. Um, and it just was. But but the track record of wide receiver selections here in in New England, it's not that of the Steelers. Oh no, it's the inverse. Um, they've made a number of wide receiver picks over the years that have just completely flamed out. Uh, most recently, Nikhil Harry. But you go back even longer; they've made some big whiffs. So Tyquan Thornton, the draft capital says you should the, you should pay attention to it. The draft capital, Mac Jones draft capital is awesome. Um, his speed, if you're not familiar with uh, Tyquan. He was the fastest. Yeah, he was, uh, like four, he was the fastest forty this year mm -hmm. at the combine, four two eight. Yeah. So you're talking otherworldly speed. I actually didn't hate his film personally, so it, I'm really conflicted because going into the draft, he was someone I was curious. He, he was obviously going to be a late round draft pick, but I kind of liked the film and he had the speed, so I was paying attention to where he went. Then he gets traded up for in the second round, taken above these other wide receivers. You'd think I'd be all in, but it's literally like. Oh, the Patriots did this. <laughs> they don't know how to right. draft a wide receiver. So um, he is probably more of a project. I don't think he makes a huge impact. Uh, he's going to take the top off a of defense with track star type athleticism down the field. He is a uh, wiry guy. 
uh, taller, six three, but one eighty two, so very thin. If you if you go back, I mean, it's almost legendary how badly the Patriots have been at picking wide receivers. Second round pick, you remember Aaron Dobson? Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. yeah. They also drafted Josh Boyce that year in the, oh, in Josh the fourth Boyce. round. Yeah, how about you know Malcolm Mitchell in the fourth? Oh, dude, Malcolm Mitchell had, had, he had a, a couple low games. Low yeah, yeah. I mean, you I had, liked him. You had Nikhil Harry. Ooh, that was a big swing in a way. They did draft Braxton Berrios. He was a sixth round pick for them, but didn't really do much. Brandon I love, Tate. I love that we just were like, hey, they got a huge win. Braxton Berrios. <laughs> right. I mean, they. It's been like really a long, long time. Seventh round pick Julian Edelman. We'll give him that. Oh yeah, there that you go. That was a good selection. All right. Um. But I drafted as like what a DB? Yeah, I was gonna say he that was the one of the gyms that they got, and it took a little while. So where do you where do you filter in Taekwon into like you know you're doing dynasty startup drafts? He's a second round pick, the fastest guy coming out this yeah, year. Yeah, he, he checks the box too of like being connected to a young quarterback. You know where where some of these players could be connected with and a changing of the guard at that position. So. Is he sneaking into your second round? Is he firmly I don't, in your I second don't, round? No, I don't. Yeah, he should be in the second round. Okay. I think it's worth the shot. I mean, we all saw the Nelson Aguilar experiment last year, and that didn't really work out. So, deep threat. Thornton could usurp him in year one. Okay. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else on the Patriots you want to talk about? Is it, Do you want Thornton or Wandale Robinson? Who was drafted by his wide receiver? I want, I want, Wandale, Thor I want Thornton. Then. I'll take Wandale okay. just because. I mean, these. Yeah, it, it, what I'm yeah. About. Wandale's production profile. I think he's just a better wide receiver. But I, I, I'm usually. I don't want either to be honest. I don't think either is going to be successful. They did draft a fourth round running back. They drafted two running backs. Yeah, and a and, sixth round running back. And it, it could be just because that's what they do. Well, it is what they do. They and annoy you. And then James White's not going to be ready yet. Exactly. But Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, James White, Pierre Strong Jr., you're not going to be happy making those decisions. Yeah, Damian Harris is a, a really good trade away candidate. It's you can either try it now or maybe because of they just drafted two uh, running backs, you might want to wait till the beginning of the season, but I do think that he will be one and done with the Patriots. Yes. I think this year will be his last year and they are kind of retooling behind the scenes, so a very good trade away candidate. Yeah, and part of that might be moving on midseason to a different rotation. The Bills drafted J.D. McKissick in the second round. Oh, no, I'm sorry. This is James Cook running back out of Georgia. You know, not a bad landing spot for Cook. Great. No. Uh, I don't know what the utilization will be. This is a Super Bowl-ready team with some players that they trust, but they've been struggling at running back, finding depth beyond Devin Singletary. So I think James Cook will come in and do what they hoped – McKissick would do when they signed McKissick. I mean, they they went out and signed him, and then he unsigned. So James Cook is way better than JD McKissick. Um, I you know maybe. May oh, that dang, got me dang, real bad. Got me, that got me. Gosh two. dang it, got me oh, three. Darn it, good job. Um, yeah, but uh, maybe at this point, you know, James Cook coming in as a rookie versus JD McKissick being a, a super vet, maybe they're about even. But um, talent wise, future. You know, whole career wise, James Cook's a good prospect. He is the brother of Dalvin Cook. Mm -hmm. um, he's a little bit undersized versus Dalvin Cook, 190, uh, but a great pass catcher. That's where he was utilized in college. He split time in the Georgia system, and he was really the, the scat back. Yeah, that's what type he profiles as. Yeah. And that is what he profiles as. But I think he can do more. And when you look at the running back one in front of him, it's not like that's a, a big bodied first and down first and second down uh you know, Devin Singletary um is a really good short space, make you miss, but can't take anything to the house. James, and in a contract year. Yeah, and a, so I think James Cook He's it's interesting. He's a. I would love to draft James Cook uh, in a dynasty league and see where the future goes. When you've got this talented of, of a guy who's great at catching the pa uh, the ball, so even if he spends his entire career as a JD McKissick, you'll have fantasy PPR value there. But I think there's a world where he gets more involved and he's already on a great offense. So g good landing spot for a talented guy. Running back is tough this year in rookie drafts. Aside from Brees and then and Kenneth Walker is going to go very. Early, he'll be – he should be at least a top-five pick in, in most rookie drafts. Single quarterback is what I'm referring to. And then after that, I mean, like, Cook is my 
third ranked running back, but I'm not targeting him until the second round. I hate to admit it, but Gabriel Davis was a winner in this Certainly. draft. They didn't invest high draft capital at the wide receiver position. Not that they had the picks to do it necessarily, but um, it was you know it was a possibility. They did spend a fifth rounder. Uh, they traded up to get uh, Khalil Shakir um, out of Boise State, yeah. but otherwise you're looking at Gabriel Davis and and you know who do you want this year? Do you want Hollywood Brown or Gabriel Davis? Oh, Hollywood. Oh, I, 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 Hollywood Brown's going to be great. Uh, Shakir is probably the a he'll probably replace Jamison Crowder uh, as a slot type of a player sooner than later for the Buffalo Bills. So, like he's Shakir is interesting in later on in your rookie draft. Gotcha. Uh, Broncos. Any takeaways here? There wasn't a lot of fantasy relevant moves other than a third round tight end. Saw Dulcich go to the uh, Broncos. That one's interesting to me. I know that uh, I've not been on the Albert O train. I have not either. But Dynasty Twitter He's so high on Dynasty rankings, man. Yes, that and that's how I felt. Not whole, ours. Yeah, well, that's how I felt. Like a guay, but not the. Oh, oh, take that! I like it. I like it a oh. lot. A little too much. Yeah, and having said that, like Albert O was a good player. Oh yeah. We just I was never in on him for fantasy football purposes but i think he'll be great when he catches a touchdown and he'll be really bad when he doesn't but greg here in the third round like greg dulcich is he's up let's there. just call him greg 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 d let's just leave it at greg uh just greg just greg well mr greg and there's not i mean there's not a lot of gregs to choose from like, let's just go with greg yeah olsen's Tra gone trey mcbride he was the top guy and but i think not far behind him was greg and <laughs> <laughs> And it's like yeah. this. This is. I think it's interesting longer term. He, again, you don't have to spend a high rookie pick on him, but no. someone that can just sit on deep on your bench. Yeah, yeah it'll take a while, but I that's think, Greg's spot. I think that you've got a while with Russell Wilson. I, I you know, Russell Wilson's right. going to play for four, five, six more years at a high level, and so uh, Greg found a really good landing spot here. Uh, the Chargers, uh, the big pick here to talk about, and I was wrong. He didn't go in the top three rounds. No. Nope. Isaiah Spiller. Look, not being able to do anything this offseason did not help Isaiah no, Spiller. No, it, it did really not. It really cost him a lot of money. And so he ends up uh, landing on a very good spot. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the Chargers, this one's tough because the draft capital he, he says something. Fourth round pick. But, I mean, we've seen what's behind Austin Eckler. And it is plodding and pedestrian at best. So Isaiah Spiller, I think, has a wider array of skills than anybody else they have on this roster outside of Eckler. So it's interesting, right? Yeah, it, it is interesting. Um, I don't think it's it's ironic. My worry uh, for them to draft a running back was to draft a goal line back. But they actually drafted a guy that is he's big. Uh, he, he he's, is he's, the, he's he a is big boy. Big, but he was like a pass catching. Like I think where he excelled the most was as a pass catcher. I I, I think that uh, he's he's great um, at catching the ball. Spiller is, but that's obviously he's not ever going to be as good as as Austin Eckler is. So whether or not this eats into Eckler year one or is more of a waiting in the wings type of player. I, I had a really hard time um, on your rankings for on my rookie rankings, rankings for Isaiah Spiller and for Austin Eckler. Austin Eckler, I moved down a little bit, not because I think he's going to take a hit this year, but just because, you know, the future, they could get out of most of the cap space after this year. Austin Eckler's 27 years old. So if if Spiller shows what he showed in college, you know, in the NFL, his rookie season has some some juice and make some good plays, even if it's in practice, that might give the team an opportunity to save money and move on quicker than I would like for Austin Eckler. I don't think they will, yeah, but I think it he'll play it me. out. I think I think Eckler will play out his contract. He by, just gets hurt. By I the mean, time, Eckler gets hurt regularly, so there will be a chance. By the time the contract is done, Eckler will be turning 29, and you're not paying. You're not, you're not giving Austin Eckler another big, juicy contract. So long-term, and Spiller... Spiller should immediately climb to be the actual backup. Yeah. In, oh, yeah. In, for the Chargers, and that's a valuable commodity to have. You guys, Zemir White fans, the Raiders took him in the fourth I mean, round. Yeah, yeah. 
I was not a huge Zamir White fan, no. Okay. I, I, I'm i not... Any um, implications here or excitement for Zamir White and the Josh I mean, Jacobs, Kenyon Drake backfield? The fact that they didn't pick up Jacobs' fifth-year option, I mean, Zamir, he can establish it. He can be a high-T guy if that's what they want. And But, no, around four... He he's not he's not interesting as interesting to me as these other guys. Like I would probably take the chance on Tyler Algier, who was drafted a round later, over Zamir White in my rookie picks. Yeah, and he's a guy that didn't catch the ball pretty much in college. That he he was the teammate of He uh, he was the Nick Chubb. Yes. Yes. He just obviously is not as good as Nick Chubb. The Chiefs uh well, they're here to provide some drama with our last AFC team because Sky Moore went in the second round. Yes, he did. But I believe – now, Kyle, you can correct me. Wasn't he the 13th or 14th wide receiver off the board at this point? I'll look it up, but yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, deep. it's somewhere in that range, which is just shocking, right? And so – 12. 12, okay. All right, still. that's a, There's 11 that were chosen by NFL GMs ahead of Sky Moore. Yeah, but one team was the Patriots. Yeah, so you know they made a mistake. That's, that's right. Well, this pick came from and one was the, the Giants had to move up. Oh, they love making mistakes too. So, opportunity is there. I think you know I'm on record, McCall Hardman. I believe he has a honestly, I think it's like a mentally imposed ceiling. Like I, I just think Hardman can't get out of his own way. He's fast. He makes big plays, and sometimes he just runs the wrong direction or does the wrong thing, and it becomes very frustrating in a kind of a smooth offense that Patrick Mahomes and Andy Reid run. So I think Sky Moore has opportunity here, but I'm not looking at it. I mean, Juju comes out of this draft better than we went into it thinking because you didn't see one of the top 11 go there. Yeah, you were worried that in the first round you are going to have um, a really big name, you know, uh, if Chris Olave dropped to them at the yes. at the twenty first spot going into the draft, that was the worry. So in that sense, Juju definitely comes out a winner. In that but, sense, oh, sorry, go ahead, sorry. But I but I do think that Skymore, like he was a good receiver, um, and this destination couldn't be much better. I know that Andy Reid gets the most out of his players, and I do agree, Andy. I think he's gotten the most out of McCall Hardman. I don't I don't think there's anything left to get. <laughs> <laughs> um. So it, Sky Moore, he's he's my eighth pick. There is this massive drop off this year in dynasty startup rankings or Ricky drafts. Dress. When you get to the eighth spot, it's user choice. The the so top two seven, two running backs. So that would be Kenneth Walker and Brees Hall, mm -hmm. and then five wide receivers, which is sure. London Wilson Williams Burks Burks and Olave. And, Olave. That's and right. beyond that. Eight, like my eighth is Christian Watson. Your eighth is Sky Moore. That's right. Um, Mike, I think you're on Watson, but it's like there is a gap between those players. Yeah, and, and that's in a, a single quarterback, obviously not a super flex. Um, but Sky Moore has every opportunity to be – I mean, when you're linked with Patrick What's Mahomes, his limit, you would say? Well, uh, the sky, yeah, sky's sky. the limit. Uh, where Juju could be a loser, though, is Sky Moore projects as a slot wide receiver, and they just gave MVS the contract. Cole Hardman is is still there, and he, at this point, the reason that Juju can't find a big contract is because he's a he's a good slot wide receiver, and you can find these guys in the second round of the draft. So that could be where an issue lies for Juju. It, maybe maybe not the beginning of the year, but as the season progresses. All right, well, we are going to wrap it up today. On Thursday, we'll be getting into all of the NFC winners and losers from the draft. Any other news that breaks, make sure you check out the Ultimate Draft Kit if you want all of our rookie rankings, dynasty rankings at ultimatedraftkit.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.